I'm glad to be here today to talk about compliance management in the financial marketplace. I wanted to take just about 10 minutes to discuss some of the general themes and advice on this topic that I gathered over my six years as director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. I'll make three main points. First, and I know, by the way, that Joanne Barefoot is very much moving, working on moving compliance into the future with RegTech. I'm actually going to move us backward into the past for a moment and try to make an analogy, and we'll see if it works. So my first point is that sound and careful compliance management, particularly as it relates to consumer compliance, is an important and indeed an indispensable function of any responsible financial company. And if you'll indulge me for a moment, let me compare it to a settled practice of the Roman military known as encampment. Rome conquered the known world of its day and ruled over it for centuries because it developed a clear advantage over all of its rivals in the military arts. That was its principal business, if you will, and it was crucial for the Romans to do it not just well, but superbly. Their lives depended on it. The Roman army learned from many reverses and constantly iterated its approach until it was, in fact, a superb professional military. The Romans thoroughly mastered the practice of making and laying out a military camp. What they learned from their enemies was this important lesson. Every day, without fail, when in proximity of their enemies, it was essential to construct a fully fortified military camp. The work involved was extensive. Each day, even if the army was on the move, a group of soldiers was designed to, designated to find a location with sources of water and forage. There they would lay out and construct a small city covering about 100 acres for four legions of about 20,000 soldiers, according to a strict template diagram with roads, a headquarters, a market, and spots for each component of the army. Even a daily camp was always entrenched by a large ditch and gated walls with a palisade on top. You can take my word for it, by the way, that there are more intricate details not germane here. But under no circumstances would this daily work be neglected. Any Roman general who failed to fortify his camp would have been viewed as guilty of military malpractice. So what does all this have to do with compliance management? I would submit that a first-class compliance management system is the camp fortification of any strong financial company. By analogy, it accomplishes three things. First, the camp kept by the Roman army kept them safe from attacks. No enemy would dare try to assault a properly fortified camp. Even so, good compliance management wards off and minimizes attacks from litigation that involve expense and demand attention while creating risk to the bottom line. Second, the camp protected the Roman arms and supplies, the necessary provisions for its operations, from ever falling into the enemy's hands. Even so, compliance management ensures the company against the reputational risk that would cause it to lose the customers who were the source of its revenues and thus the lifeblood of its success. Third, the camp properly guarded and fortified served as a redoubt for the army in case of reverses, as a place to fall back and regroup. Just so, solid compliance protects the company against regulatory risk when errors and problems may arise, as they surely will from time to time. A sound compliance management system helps preserve a strong regulatory relationship to correct and resolve those concerns. So no sensible financial company will neglect to have in place a thorough compliance management system, especially in consumer compliance. For those who consider the time and expense of such systems to be money taken away from bottom line profits, they're misguided in their thinking. Just as the Romans would not think of waging war without always fortifying their camp, no financial company should be engaged in business competition without ensuring the processes that guarantee compliance. Their leadership owes that clear duty to their shareholders and all their other stakeholders. Leaving behind the Punic Wars then, let me turn to my second point today. Any good compliance management system depends crucially on information, data, and analytics. The more you know and the more you can figure out about your business, 
the more you can detect risk, thereby helping to avoid or minimize risk. You already have a certain amount of information available to you about your own company. Customer feedback, litigation, regulatory oversight, both supervision and enforcement, and the sheer mountains of data about how your business is faring and what the trends are. These are all invaluable building blocks of sensing the risks that you face in compliance. Mine that data, create sensible analytics, automate the interpretation of the data as much as you can, check it regularly, and double check it by having probing discussions with those personally involved in each aspect of your operations. In addition, be diligent in finding other sources of data about the same items in your broader industry sector. Where public data is made available, find it, collect it, and make use of it. The CFPB, for instance, makes available the public database of consumer complaints just for this purpose. There was an article in this morning in the American Banker on just this subject making my point. By the way, all of that information is available to the public anyway through requests under the Freedom of Information Act but the database adds convenience. It enables you to see what customers are saying about the other companies in your markets. It may reveal problems that you do not, do not yet know you have, or problems you may be able to identify and avoid before you have them. Similarly, public records on litigation are worthy of close attention. To make sure you understand what the disputes are about, and to double check your own company to see if you can mitigate such risks. Finally, where regulators are willing to make information available to the public about their oversight of other companies in your sector, you should make it a point to look carefully at what they're saying. Any public enforcement action will include some amount of detail about what the problem was and what was done about it. We always try to provide extensive detail in our press releases, not always appreciated by the company that was the subject of the enforcement action, but informative to everyone else uh, in the marketplace. These are worth learning from. And any compilation of anonymized supervisory information about issues of concern and potential problems and risks for you to understand and deal with proactively if possible. At the CFPB, we issued regular editions of a document we called Supervisory Highlights for just this purpose, and I see that they continue to issue it under the new leadership and responsible actors in the financial industry found it to be insightful and valuable. My third and last point is that no doubt you are, as you certainly should be, developing your own customized analytics to monitor your own operations. Any financial company of any size is hard to manage. That's just the reality. The intentions of those in charge, of those who set the direction and policies to be followed, may not be entirely clear, and may not be executed flawlessly. Of course, that's never happened in the history of financial companies. But if this is so, you should not fail to know it. In companies with hundreds or even thousands of employees, at our largest banks, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of employees, these situations are very real, and they can go undetected for some time if the leadership is not careful to insist on investing in strong analytics in compliance management. For example, the sales practices violations that occurred at Wells Fargo should never have been permitted to get so completely out of hand. The opening of phony bank accounts and credit card accounts, which ultimately numbered in the millions, should never have happened on any appreciable scale. These problems should have been easily detected by customized analytics in place at the bank that would have thrown up red flags to identify them at an early stage. The power of modern computerized data analysis is a great boon to consumer compliance management and to compliance management of all kinds. Everyone should be relentlessly persistent in finding new ways to apply it to carry out this important work. Make no mistake about it. Your efforts to produce effective compliance management are incredibly important to your company. Your work deserves to be honored and supported and recognized for the key contributions it makes to the success of the business. I learned that from my time leading the CFPB, where we regarded sound compliance management as the first line of consumer protection, and our regulatory efforts as secondary to that process. It has always been true that the success of a company begins and ends with how it treats its customers. You are the guardians of that process 
And I'm certain that consumers everywhere will benefit if you're doing this work as well as you possibly can. Thank you.